So let's analyze merge sort, right? So merge sort, remember, was this divide and conquer algorithm, which divided the list into two halves, sorted the first half, sorted the second half, and then merged the two halves into B. And merging basically looked at the first element in each list and moved the smaller one. And if any of the lists become empty, you just copy the other list. So this is just a summary of uh, the basic high level thing of merge sort. So merge sort on the left just tells you that you sort the two halves and then merge them and the merge operations on the right. right? So we want to now analyze how long merge sort takes. So we have to basically analyze both these things separately. We have to check how long merge takes and then how long merge sort takes. So let's try to analyze merge. So remember that this is our merge function. Okay. So this uh, in this function somewhere there is yeah, a typo. Yeah. So in this function we basically want to merge two lists of length m and n and remember that we have this condition which terminates a loop. So that should give us a clue as to what the complexity of this function is going to be. So essentially the output list has m plus n elements because all the elements of A and all the elements of B have to go into the list. And the crucial thing is that when I go around this loop, right, then I make progress by moving at least one element. So in these two cases, I move one element to C, either the first element of A or the first element of B moves to C. In some cases, I make a lot of progress. So in these two cases, I actually move a whole chunk of elements. But in the worst case, it might happen only at the end. I might be alternately moving, right? So if I have something like 0, 1, 2 and 3, 4, 5, right? So I might, oh, sorry, 0, 2, 4 and 1, 3, 5, right? Then I might move as follows. I will first move the 0, then I'll move the 1, then I'll move the 2, then I'll move the 3, then I'll move the 4, and then I'll move the 5, right? So I will only move one at a time. But in the worst case, I'm not going to do any worse than that, right? I have to move m plus n elements, and in every time I go around this loop, I moved at least one. So I'm going to definitely finish in m plus n time, right? So basically, it's easy to see that merge takes time proportional to the sum of the total number of elements to be merged, m plus n. Now, in a situation like merge sort, we are applying merge in a special case where the two lists are almost the same size, right? Because we're doing half and half. So even if it's not exactly half, because say there's an odd number of elements or something, they are roughly the same, right? So we are looking at a situation where m is approximately equal to n. And we have seen before that if I take m plus n, it is going to be less than two times the maximum, right? So we had seen this when we did this uh, asymptotic complexity. We said f plus g, f1 plus f2 will be two times the maximum of g1, g2, right? So m plus n will be two times the maximum, but the maximum of m and n when m and n are almost the same is just n or m, whichever, because they are almost the same. So merge will take, essentially it will take time order n, right, which makes sense. So now what about merge sort? Now merge sort is a recursive algorithm. Merge sort of A requires me to solve merge sort of half of A, right? So let's first of all assume that the n that we are dealing with, because we are going to keep dividing by 2, let's assume that the n we are divide, dealing, by, dealing with is actually a power of 2. So every time we divide by 2, we will come down nicely to a number in, in, in some uniform way. Okay? So t of n is what we want to calculate, where we are assuming n is actually of the form 2 to the power k. It doesn't really matter as you will see for the analysis, but it's simpler to calculate in this way. So now our recurrence basically says that if n is 0 or 1, then I return immediately, right? Because n is less than or equal to 1, I return immediately. So t of 0 and t of 1 are both 1. And otherwise, I have to do 2 times t of n by 2 work, because that is the cost of sorting half the array twice, the first half and the second half. In binary search, we only have to do either the first half or the second half. Here we are doing both, right? So we sort both halves. And then we are merging them, and we saw that merging two lists of roughly the same size is basically big O of that size. So it's going to take n steps to merge n plus 2 plus n, n by 2 plus n by 2. So we have, this is our merging cost, right? So now, as usual, we unwind, right? So we start with this recurrence. We start with 2t n by 2 plus n. And then we take this and we expand this as 2t n by 2 by 2, which is n by 4 plus n by 2. So basically, I am substituting this n by 2 in this function. So I am getting another factor of 2 here and this thing is getting copied here. Right? So I am just using the same expansion. This is what we always do for our uh, unwinding. 
So I'm replacing Tn by 2 by 2Tn by 4 plus n by 2. Now I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning up like we had done uh, when we did binary search. I'm going to combine these twos as 2 squared and I'm going to combine this and I'm going to, com I'm going to do some uh, cleaning up. So first of all, notice that there are several things happening, right? So this plus this is, is 2 squared. This is again 2 squared and this cancels with this. So I get an n from here and I get an n from here, right? So if I expand this out, I claim I have 2 squared, right, this 2 squared times t of n by 2 squared and then because I have this 2 times n by 2 plus this n, I have 2 times n, okay. So now let us do it one more time just to see what happens, right. So I take this and I expand it and I get 2 times t of n by 1 more power of 2 at the bottom. So 2 times n by t cube plus n by t squared n by 2 squared, right? And then I have this 2n. Now again I do this calculation. So this 2 squared, 2 squared cancel, I get one more n, so I get 3n. And then this 2 cubed and this 2 cubed comes here, right? So, I, so you can now see a pattern. After two expansions, I, two, I get two, 2 squared t of n by 2 squared plus 2n. After three expansions, I get 2 cubed t of n by 2 cubed plus 3n. So you can work out that after k steps, I'll get 2 to the power k t of n by 2 to the power k. So this is just saying that I am dividing that interval by 2 k times and k times n. Now when do we kind of reach this base case when this becomes 1, right? So as usual we look at the case where k is log n. So if k is log n then n by 2 to the k becomes 1. So t of n by 2 to the k is t of 1 is 1, right? So at this value of k I get t of n is 2 to the power k, so that is 2 to the power log n times t of 1 which is 1 and then this is again k, so we are looking at this expression and we are plugging in k is equal to log n. So for k is equal to log n, I am getting this log n, for this k, I am getting this log n and for this n by 2 to the k, I am getting 1, right? So this is just 1, 2 to the log n is just n, right? Two to the, you can just check that for yourself, but 2 to the log n is just n. So this whole thing on the left hand side simplifies to n and this right hand side becomes n log n. And because n log n is bigger than n, I can throw away the n term and say that this is big O of n log n, right? So actually merge sort is big O of n log n, which is really what we want because we said that finally when we are using that SIM card thing, we need to do n log n work to search. So if the sorting takes more than n log n time, we are in bad, bad shape, but now we are saying that merge sort will actually take n log n time. So this takes n log n time and I claimed without justifying it, you can look it up if you are interested, that you cannot do better than n log n in such kind of sorting where you are comparing and exchanging. So it can be used effectively on large inputs. Another thing is that that merge function that we saw here actually can be used in a number of contexts. So one thing is if you take two lists of values without duplicates, you can take the union and remove duplicates. So basically whenever I move from A and B to C, if I see the same value at A and B, J, I keep only one copy but I move both the pointers. Similarly, you can do intersection. If I see the same value, I move it. If I do not see the same value, I skip it, right? So the same merge function, there are lots of variations and they can do very interesting things with two sorted lists. You can also do the list difference, everything which is in A but which is not in B and so on. One of the drawbacks of this thing is that merge needs to create a new list. There is no obvious way to put those lists back into the list that you started with. Remember that in insertion and selection, we had a clever way of moving the things to the beginning so that we didn't have to create a new list. But in merge, there's no obvious way to actually put it back because you have no idea really where it's going to come. So you can't really take and reuse space in A and B to store the merge of A and B. You don't know which of them is going to move faster compared to the other. So you have no option but to create extra space, right? And this extra space is an extra resource that we have to use. And the other thing is that this merge sort, there is no way to avoid this recursive call. I mean, we saw for insertion sort, for example, that we could do insertion sort with recursion, without recursion. And sometimes it's easier to do one than the other. But merge sort is kind of inherently recursive. There's no easy way to describe merge sort without recursion. So we'll try to address some of these issues by looking at yet another sorting algorithm.